if you could read my mind, love, what a tale my thoughts could tell. Just like an old time movie about a ghost from a wishing well. In a castle dark or a fortress strong with chains upon my feet, you know that ghost is me. And I will never be set free as long as I'm a ghost and you can see. If I could read your mind, love, what a tale your thoughts could tell. Just like a paper talk novel, the kind the drugstore sells. When you reach the part where the heartache comes, the hero would be me. But heroes often fail. And you won't read that book again because the ending's just too hard to take. What more does a girl need? I sing happily as I turn the corner sharply. Down the gravel road, I spot a swaggering, bare-chested man. Long hair, I murmured. Ooh, girl, the sweat drips down my thighs to the leather below. My radiator is running empty at just the right time. I honk, honk, and pull over. The man with the steel blue eyes just stops and stares. Kind of slow to react, I say. Oh, those Paul Newman eyes. I grab my raw hide pouch of filtered water to replenish my old jalopy's thirst. I open up the hood and climb onto the front fender. I pry open the radiator cap and begin filling the head of the radiator. I conjure up wild images of the bare-chested man, admiring how the wind can gently brush over my ass and slightly sway my short sun skirt. I imagine a smile of admiration as he rocks side to side in his cowhide boots. As he approaches, I hold my breath I chuckle slightly as I tighten the radiator cap on, and in the spur of the moment, I jump off and fall back against his bare chest. Ooh, excuse me, as I flash my full smile directly into his eyes. He returns the gesture. I feel this intense energy coming from him and entering my body. It takes my breath away. Laddie and Sam nudge their noses on my leg. Want a ride? He nods. Oh boy, girl, have you got your day cut out for you. I head back over to the driver's side and jump in. He throws his pack into the back of the van, but I hear Sam growling. I've always loved Sam for being my protector. Vince, my old music teacher, gave him to me. Apparently, when Sam was born, his master beat him and broke his spirit. But now he's mine. And any time a man approaches me, he makes sure not to welcome him. Down, Sam, I shout as the man gets into the passenger side. Hey, let me show you one of my favorite watering holes. I start up the old rig and off we bump down the old gravel road. And there's a place up ahead that I love to go to. Legend has it that many maidens came to cleanse and dress themselves there for ceremonial use. You from around here? He just shrugs, no. I want to say, cack on your tongue, but I just fix my eyes on his golden bronze body and long brown hair. There are bits of leaves and twigs in his, though he's been traveling the woods and not the main road. I become flushed from the heat, and my thighs tingle from looking at him. Around the bend, I see large boulders can hear the rush of the river. I gear down and turn to the right into a flat meadow. Here it is. I open the door and hop down. I take off my sandals immediately so that my feet can feel the soft, mossy ground. I walk a little ways towards my favorite boulder. And taking off my skirt and top, I climb on the rock that is so smooth. 
The granite feels warm against my youthful skin. <laughs> Funny, I chuckle. He stills in the truck. I close my eyes and wrestle my spine against the heat of the granite. And dozing off for a few minutes, I wake him to hear splashing in the water. Either it's the dogs or him. I open one eye and glance towards the sound, and there he is. Now, does he have any stench, stitch of clothing on, I ponder? Soon he glides over to another rock and gently lifts his full bare ass to me. Ah, I sigh. As he rolls his tan body over, I notice something catching the sunlight. It's a ruby in his navel. Wow! <laughs> Woo-wee! Fiery red exciting me. His eyes catch mine. My name is Ruby, he says, breaking his silence. 